Well, morning, guys. Hope everybody's well. Um, in London today, it's okay. Cold, blue, strange clouds. So, no change there then. Um, in the world, things are crazy, topsy turvy. People getting the jabberwocky all over the place, and all sorts of news not coming out, but. I'm just sort of trying to keep myself busy, occupied and um, on a good vibe, as they say. And I hope you're all doing the same. So uh, last night, Cathy from um, Obsidian Alice brought out a video called The Dance of Shiva Has Begun. And uh, thanks, thanks for the shout out, Kath. I, I did a video about alchemical bricks, and I'm, I'm going to do more on that. I've been looking more into the alchemical process and sort of like transferring it to um, us in the physical form rather than the spiritual form, because most alchemy now plays on the spiritual um, aspect. But I'm looking more on um, the physical transformation, transmutation. Anyway, I was watching Cathy last night and she was going through um, how rocks and stones are all organic and uh, all of a sudden she launches into this, this time thing. And <laughs> I, I, it, it's, you know, I was in touch with Cathy for the brick stuff and I didn't know where she was going to go with her vid and she sort of launches off into an area that I've been looking at and I've had a video sat on my my laptop now for three weeks or so all lined up to go and thinking where am I going to go with this and basically she's got it all here so she's talking here about how all over the world we have these observatories all over the world we have these observatories yeah and that the Vatican has this chappy which is a binocular telescope and she goes on to talk about how time and speed it's all about time and speed and maybe all these time movie films and everything have got some um, truth in them and that yeah indeed they have the ability to see time and space with an array of mirrors up there held up by those um, metal ball things and that's what these Vatican telescopes are all about and they've got a few of them I'll, I'll look at that in a minute but when, when she started to do this I, I just I don't know if anybody else is having a lot of synchronicities and coincidences in their life at the moment because they've been coming thick and fast here not just me my children as well my, my daughter um, sent me a text yesterday um, you'll never believe what happened and she had a dream that she met a friend of hers that she hasn't seen for 15 years. She met his ex-partner and he started to shout at her. And the next day she went out for the day to our old hometown and met the girl for the first time in 15 years. The girl whose partner she dreamt about the night before. So I got this sort of text, you'll never guess what happened. I get these texts, you never guess what just happened from people all the time lately and number synchronicities all the time and and saying something the same time somebody else is saying it oh it's just time is changing and uh, well let me show you what I've got so I do a lot of research but also I do a lot of um, watching easy viewing I'd call it I like things like obsolete oddity he's a good channel um, and, and these sort of darker stories I like to have a listen to them sometimes and this guy is an American guy called and he's got a channel called strange but true I think his name's Chris White anyway I found this <laughs> the Pope's traveling machine so he tells the story here of a priest who invented something called the chronovisor back in the 1950s and this thing has the ability to read the vibrational waves of the past a device called the chronovisor that allowed the user to look and hear into the distant past and it was housed 
in the Vatican. Many years earlier, Brune had met with Father Ernetti, an Italian Benedictine monk, musicologist, and scientist. Ernetti was a well-respected authority on archaic music, and a sought-after mentor for many clerics in Europe. So this guy... And this is the chronovisor. This guy, Father Ametti. Let's go up here a bit. He was an expert on archaic music, pre-Christian music. And that's sacred music. That's the music that we don't know about, you know? That's the sacred chords we hear about. Another, a, a different frequency. So the chronovisor, a device used by the Vatican to look into the future and the past. According to numerous reports and stories, this is, sorry, this is from Stargate Research, Pegasus Research Consortium, sorry. According to numerous reports and stories, among the many alleged secrets the Vatican has, there is a device called the Chronovisor. This device enables its user to observe future as well as past events. Many believe this device is one of the greatest guarded secrets humanity has ever had. And then he talks about H.G. Wells. This is all in Italian. And this is a news article that indicated that dozens of scientists have created an artifact that allowed them to photograph the past. It is believed that the team received important help from Nobel laureate Enrico Fermi and famous rocket scientist Werner von Braun. So it's a relatively small object, equipped with a number of antennas and composed entirely of precious alloys, cathode tubes, some dials and levers. Reports by Father Anetti suggest that whoever uses the device is able to capture and record specific locations, important events and follow in history noteworthy individuals. Now this claims to be a photograph taken with the chrono visor, but I don't believe it for a second. I think this, is, this looks like Walt Disney. This looks like those early Disney cartoons where the, everything's exaggerated eyes. And, and I think it's just, you know... It might be. might be a picture of something. I don't know. I don't know. I don't think so, though. But according to him, he did um, photograph the crucifixion. But whether or not that is the photograph that he photographed, I don't know. <laughs> but he remained secretive and stated he was not at liberty to reveal further details about it. And he revealed that it worked by processing residual electromagnetic radiation left over by numerous processes. He said that his invention had managed to witness the destruction of Sodom and Gomorrah, a major historical event. You see, when they talk about things like this, I think it discredits it. When they start talking about it, it gives the stone tablets, and I don't, I, I, I don't know. According to Father Francois, he met Father Anetti in the 1960s when the two were travelling across the Grand Canal of Venice and they were both experts in ancient languages and they began to talk about the Bible and its interpretation. Father Broom was very intrigued when, when Father Anetti revealed that there was a machine that could answer all questions relating to the Bible. Anetti told Broom that the machine worked by detecting images and sounds that humanity had created which were floating in space, which is pretty much the conclusion that Cathy came to. She came to this conclusion without even looking at this chronovisor thing. She's worked out that, you know, it's all in space and they're watching it. Let's, let's, let's carry on. Where am I? Where am I? Where am I? Here. Right. So, yeah, that's supposed to be its blueprint. And this, I don't know if you've ever seen Fringe, the series. Well, Walter Bishop in Fringe builds this. It's his window and through his window he, you can see time, a different time window. Now Fringe it's quite a long series but if you've got the time I recommend you watch it. It's sort of like Walter Bishop is this um, crazy scientist who's worked in many fields including MK Ultra, time um, experimentation and he invents this thing and through this window he sees his alternate 
um, person himself, turn itself, trying to invent a remedy to cure cure his son. Now, on this side of the reality, Walter Bishop's son dies because he can't find, he gets the um, solution too quick. And he sees his um, alternative Walter, Walternet they call him, making this sort of remedy to cure his own child, but missing the reaction because he gets um, distracted by an observer. That's the sort of person who goes to make sure that certain events happen. Walter Bishop goes through, he invents a way to get through, goes through to cure the child but inadvertently smashes the remedy as he goes through the vial and has to bring the child back, thus creating a time-space anomaly, a, 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 an anomaly in the fabric of space and time which creates all sorts of problems and has to invent and then there's a time machine comes in but this here and this is another photograph of it it's basically a chronovisor. Yeah? Forbidden Technology, Part 2, Project Looking Glass. So, Looking Glass technology is a device using wormhole technology to see into future, probably, or probability, or past. The original tech was derived from cylinder seals that slightly predate the Sumerian time frame. Some of the information was recopied in Sumerian cylinder seals and this information was for a series of instructions for accessing wormholes which naturally pass in the hyperspace in which we find ourselves. And from there scientists worked on the technology, they built the equipment from the instructions and then after building the equipment from the instructions they tweaked it and found out different things about it. One of the things that they found is that they could actually use it as a peering portal like a peering glass if you will, to see different aspects of not only the future but the past. This device, at least three to four years ago, could not focus on a detailed sequence of activities. In other words, you can't, you can't see exactly what would happen, like a series of events. So, consider the multiverse idea combined with work by Richard Gott on cosmic strings. So, I'll leave the link to that. And of course, you can always look into your own research if you want to carry on looking into um, <coughs> um, this sort of thing. If this is interesting. The groups using the technology all agreed to dismantle the technology and agreed not to use it until after the year 2017. It was also discovered that information about this technology had been purposely planted in the past to many areas of the world. One such place was Iraq, which has been confiscated. Well, we all know that a lot of the reasons for the problems in the Middle East, well, in the in our in our community anyway, we're aware that it was to get rid of the old architecture and by the sounds of it, the old tech, yeah. Now the Holy See. The Holy See. I keep hearing this, the Holy See. And I thought it was SEA. And I thought, why do they call it the Holy See? Is there a Holy See? And then I thought it was a, a big capital letter C. And it is the Holy See. And the Holy See is him. The Pope. And his seat. So if you go to Wiki and look up the Holy See, it's basically... Hang on. I didn't know this until I read this earlier. The Holy See is called the See of Rome and is the jurisdiction of the Bishop of Rome, known as the Pope. So the Pope is the Bishop of Rome. And in Fringe you have Walter Bishop, who has a viewing machine. And now we've got the Holy See, who is the Pope, who is a Bishop. And when you look at this terminology here for the word C. Have I gone past it already? Don't let me... The word C comes from the Latin word sedus, meaning seat, which refers to the episcopal throne. So why isn't it called the holy seat? Or the holy throne? So, because if you look at the etymology of the word C, it basically just means look. It doesn't mean seat or throne. 
to witness or observe by personal experience, to understand, to foresee, predict or prophecy, to see a friend. So it means look, gaze, behold, describe, espy, observe, view, follow, get, understand. It does not say it means seat. And the Latin for seat is cedus. It's not holy see, it's holy seat. And he's a bishop. And he's looking into the future. Yeah, I reckon he is. I reckon this is real, right. So, C translated into Latin is Vida. It just doesn't make sense, does it? Okay, where's my um, Holy See? So, St. Peter's Basilica is perhaps the church most associated with the papacy. The actual cathedral of the Holy See is the Arch Basilica of St. John Lateran in the city of Rome. So, this is the Pope's Holy See, his seat, his holy seat, see, God, like hidden in plain sight. And that does of course bring us on to the Vatican telescopes, the Alice P. Lennon telescope, the Thomas J. Bannon facility. All looking into who knows what. I absolutely, I'm just absolutely blown away because I was going to just present this as a little bit of whimsy and think, well, well, maybe people can find something interest from this, whether it's true or not. But now that Kathy's put that video up today, and also look, right, there's quite a lot of stuff on YouTube about once you once you look for it, you'll find it everywhere. But I want you to see initially. This is another one, this is another one, this is another one, photograph of Jesus. Well, some of them really go for it. But look at the word Krona visor. Say Krona. Say Krono, fast. Krono. Yeah, Krona, Krono, Krona. Visor. Move the R and the S. Krona virus, Krona visor. What is going on? What's happening? <laughs> At the beginning of this video, this guy really goes on about um, a time travel movie on, um, it's actually on Amazon's and I'm watching it, it's called Outlander and it is good, it is good, it's about a woman who goes back through some sacred stones, back to 19th century, 18th century Scotland and uh, it's really, really good so... Yeah, I'm watching a time travel movie and I'm looking into time time now. Thanks very much for watching. And go watch Kathy's video. Well worth a watch. Great stuff.